Good morning, everyone. Welcome to First Congregational Church of Bellingham, United Church of Christ. My name is Davi. I'm one of the pastors here. It's so good to have you all with us. Uh, I'm going to share some uh, simple announcements as we begin our time of worship together. Um, whether you come with a heavy heart or a joyful heart or some of both, we're just so glad to have you with us here in person or with us online as we call our Bigger Balcony uh, friends. Um, if you are here in person, you are invited to coffee hour following worship. I guess you're also invited if you're at home, but you have to make your own coffee. Um, we're going to be in the courtyard just on the other side of the social hall. Uh, and there's a live bluegrass band providing music for coffee hour. That was, that was more tepid than I was expecting. There's a live bluegrass band. Okay. That's about where I was at. Perhaps your, your tepid response was about the uh, seemingly continuing rain, which will make that a different... Um, different kind of joy. Uh, so bring your raincoat, grab a coffee cup from the kitchen, uh, follow the tide of folks, or just keep heading that way until you hear bluegrass music. One of my favorite directions. Um, we are uh, welcoming new members today. Um, there was an error in the bulletin. There's a couple of folks listed as joining that, that aren't actually joining. One of those people doesn't actually exist because we got their name wrong, but uh, I just want to apologize to those folks. It's really important at First Congregational that we celebrate folks who are ready to join. I promise we're not trying to peer pressure you to join by putting your name in the bulletin. A uh, mistake on our part. Um, this coming Wednesday at 7 p.m., we've got a Zoom conversation with Jim Antall. Reverend Jim Antall is a, a UCC pastor and author of our All Church Reads book this year, Climate Church, Climate World. Uh, I find it to be a really helpful accessible and challenging read about how um, congregations and people of faith can respond to um, continuing climate crisis throughout our world. I think it's a really uh, timely and important read, and I hope, whether or not you read the book, I hope you'll consider being present for that conversation with uh, Jim Antall this Wednesday at 7. More details in your Friday email. Um, we continue to collect recipes as we continue to talk about family stories and cultural stories. There's a few really beautiful stories in, uh, in, the, in the narthex and the gathering area out there. Um, I assume they have beautiful recipes attached to them, but I'm not enough of a cook to tell you whether that's the case. I'm told they have really beautiful recipes connected to them. Speaking of resources, we'll be sharing um, in the congregation and after worship. Um, next week, we're having some anti-racism uh, conversation. We'll have some folks from the Whatcom Racial Equity Commission coming to share in the service and, and a panel after worship. Um, and as part of that, um, John Mark Slagle is gathering recommendations for anti-racist books. If you've read something recently that uh, charges you up, that inspires you, that, that um, clears some, up some questions or um, uh, troubles the water of some of your assumptions, I hope that you'll share that uh, book title and a little bit about why it was helpful to you with John Mark. Again, uh, the Friday email is the place for that contact info. And if you're not on the Friday email, please let the church office know, office at fccb.net. Other exciting events are coming up, uh, but none more exciting um, than welcoming uh, Pastor Piwa, our visiting pastor this summer. And I'm going to invite Pastor Piwa to come up with us. Um, so um, we're going to say, we, we kind of began to celebrate Pastor Piwa's ministry among us last Sunday, but uh, now they're here in person, so we have a little prayer we'd like to pray as a blessing for them. Um, and I'll invite you to join me all in this, uh, it's, it's in your bulletin, uh, you can find the bulletin online if you're at home, uh, and please pray along wherever you are. God, we pray for Pastor Piwa. May they be blessed as they help to lead us through this season of renewal, of visioning, of change and rest. Give them strength and courage for tender truth-telling and lead us to support them, to love them, and to journey with them as you call us. Amen.
the last and most important announcement that we close with every week is this. No matter who you are, no matter where you are on life's journey, no matter what anger the news has kindled in you, no matter what heartbreak recent events have unlocked in your body, whatever you carry and whatever carries you, you are welcome in this place. You are God's beloved. Thanks be to God. I invite you to join me in the call to worship, which is printed in your bulletin. If the Spirit leads you, you're invited to rise. Together we gather to worship with the Spirit as we celebrate their expansive love. As we express gratitude for their faithfulness show up in life's struggles. As we come to them with more questions than answers, they live with us in the unknown. Alleluia! Divinity is with us and within us. Let us worship. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you. I want to invite now our uh, new members, uh, our new members to be, I suppose, to come up and join us. Um, oh, I can take my mask off. Here at First Congregational Ch Church, it's always a blessing to uh, celebrate when folks want to be part of this um, particular band of co journeyers this uh, assortment of troublemakers and ruffians, this sweet crew of beloved friends. Um, and so we have a few of those folks. I'm actually gonna invite you, can you kind of like go this way so that more people can see you? Yeah, and just back up just a little, okay. <laughs> Two years of high school theater right here, y'all. This is, uh, um, 
So uh, I'm going to just say a little bit about each of these folks. Um, there's no way to summarize the journey of wisdom and pain and growth and discernment that leads to someone joining a church. Um, but uh, we're going to just say a little bit about who they are, kind of as, um, I don't know, like as like a preview, um, so that you might uh, chat with them in coffee hour or when you see them in book group or uh, when you run into them in the grocery store, just to have a little starting place for your conversations. And I know that many rich relationships of friendship and support and collaboration will, will grow from here. Um, Let's see. Oh, Wynn's right next to me. Great. Um, <laughs> you're at the top of my list here. Um, uh, Lynn Badger comes to us from Montana. Uh, she and her husband were active at the Missoula uh, UCC Church uh, for about 25 years. Um, she's particularly drawn to uh, collaborative ministry like singing, like uh, working together in the kitchen or in coffee hour. Um, if I were you... Uh, uh, some of the things I'm excited to talk with her about, I should say, is um, she has a son who collects board games and card games, and they uh, spend a lot of time playing board games, so that's exciting for the likes of me. Um, and she also uh, spends time helping her uh, granddaughter by weeding at Common Threads, which is one of the public school gardening programs, and it, as well as being a gardener herself. So um, welcome, Lynn. It's so good to have you with us. Um, Linda, um, in, the, in the center here, I don't know that we should have people wave, but uh, Linda uh, moved to Bellingham from New Jersey to be with her daughter, Julia, who is a, a naturopathic doctor here in town. Um, her son, Jason, is a lawyer in Brooklyn, New York. Um, her husband passed away from cancer in uh, 2020, and she served about 45 years as a social worker in settings uh, ranging from child abuse prevention to juvenile justice to hospice care. Um, she grew up, uh, I like this part, she grew up in a UCC church in a small town in Nebraska, and she heard a sermon when she was in eighth grade that inspired her to become a social worker. So, um, Judy Erian there uh, found us through her sister, Barb, and, and her brother-in-law, Stormy. Uh, she and her late husband, Terry, spent nearly 60 years together in Chico, California. Um, she mostly worked in human resources for the school district there. Um, Judy has connected with First Congregational Church in a lot of ways uh, via her um, friendship, her, her family relationship with Barb. Um, a lot of work with Pilgrim Circle and the Fresh Start Ministry, uh, with Book Club and more. Um, she also enjoys uh, gardening, painting, and theater. Like I said, that's no kind of fair summary of a person's entire life, but that's where the work of the congregation begins. It's such a sweet opportunity to greet and welcome each other, whether we're brand new or whether we see each other all the time, to ask those questions that get a little deeper. I hope you'll have some time for that after the service, but also in the months and years to come. So, we have a couple folks from our membership board who have worked hard to make today possible. Um, and one of them is going to read the new member covenant. Beth, are you doing that or is Jean? Okay. It's Beth. <laughs> do you want me to do it? Or I, I thought they were going to read it themselves. Oh, I'm sorry. I got out of order, as usual. Okay, so... Uh, Yes, Beth will lead us in the Congregational Covenant, but that doesn't happen just yet. And so wisely, uh, we're going to do the New Member Covenant first. So I'll put this microphone in front of you, but feel no pressure about that. Um, I'm sorry. All right. Um, so when you're ready, we invite you to join, uh, we invite you to read the New Member Covenant. And those of you who are members, feel free to um, follow along out loud or silently and just affirm um, see how that pulls on you or invites you today, as you're led. We promise to worship God, preach the gospel of Jesus Christ, celebrate the sacraments of baptism and Holy Communion, and encourage the realization of God's will in the lives of people from birth to death, individually and collectively, as seen in the life, teaching, death, and living presence of Jesus Christ. 
in keeping with Christ's teachings, we are welcoming all, growing in faith, living God's love, justice, compassion. Will the congregation join together in reading the Congregational Covenant? We, the members of First Congregational Church of Bellingham, United Church of Christ, warmly welcome you, not to a congregation of the sinless, but to a living community of faith that seeks to find new ways of being in relationship with God and enacting God's intention for the wholeness of humankind. We give thanks for your life stories, your faith journeys, your diversity of gifts. We pray that God will help provide us a nurturing environment for you and enable us to take time for one another as we establish a shared faith and common history. One of the ways that we welcome people is to give them a gift. And so today, the new members will be receiving a gift bag that has bread and salt, which are traditional gifts in many cultures, as a welcome to a new home. The symbolism of these gifts is deeply rooted in both the Jewish and Christian faiths. Bread symbolizes people coming together in community, and salt represents the welcome spice of diversity. We continue this tradition as we welcome you. Additionally, from last year's or last fall's um, workshop about extravagant welcome, they each have a stone that's painted that says, you are welcome. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. Uh, can we applaud? Would that be? Yeah. <laughs> That was at least as excited as the Bluegrass Band, I think. Um, <laughs> it's now time to share peace with each other. You can uh, seek out one of our new members and give them a, a high five or an elbow bump or whatever they like. Um, you can also turn to somebody you've known for years and greet them as if it's their first time with that same joy whether you're a member or not, whether it's your first time or your thousandth time, you are beloved by God. Uh, if you like, you can also come up to this microphone here and look right in that camera and say, peace be with you to the folks who are joining us from home or on the road. Peace be with you. Share peace with each other. Marat and Bobby, peace be with you. Miss you here. Peace be with you. Good morning, peace be with you. Peace be with you, Balcony.
I invite you to join me now in a time of prayer. I don't know about you, but for me it's been a busy morning and even a busy service, so I invite you to take a few deep breaths with me to breathe in and out. To breathe in and out. To breathe in and out. Holy mystery, you who call us together and send us out again. We thank you for your presence among us. Your presence that welcomes us. Your presence that heals us. Your presence that changes us by making us more and more and more who we are. God, we pray today for those who mourn. We pray for Judy W. and her family as they mourn the death of Judy's mom last week. Bring comfort and healing. Bring rest and peace. God, we pray today for the families and friends and communities of those killed in the racist violence in Buffalo. God, bring comfort, bring transformation, bring justice. Bring the kind of change that we cannot yet imagine. Lead us as we respond. Each as you whisper. God, we pray for all of those who experience violence in their own homes, in the streets, in Ukraine, in other places where state violence unfolds across the world. God of peace, change us. Pray that you will continue to renew us as we hear the call of your creation and transform our lives, grow our hearts so that we may be faithful collaborators with our siblings across the world and across species. Come, Jesus, lead us. God, we pray for all of these things, and we pray for the things that move in our hearts, joys and sorrows, angers and fears, anxieties, things we don't have names for. God, hear our prayers that we offer up to you out loud or quietly or in our own bodies. John. God, you come to set us free from all that would bind us. Come once again so that we may join in your sweet dance of liberation. We offer these prayers to you in your many names and in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray like this. Our parent who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, 
thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And at least not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Do you like my outfit? I was going to have Susan come up here and stand with me and bring a pitchfork and do a little American Gothic thing. You know, I, I feel like I earned the right because this week I did uh, a pitch a, a whole load of, of hay and, and loose pile hay, so um, I know how to use a pitchfork. But there's this gentle, quiet voice in my life it's the same voice that told me not to bring a live chicken to worship a while ago. <laughs> and that person suggested that a pitchfork might not be the best visual element for a time with children. <laughs> so between just you and me, I don't think we will be seeing uh, rides in a manure spreader in the parking lot anytime soon. Anyway. I see that most of the children who are in the room have come up closely, and I thank you very much for coming up closely. If there are others who want to come up and see better what this crazy person looks like, you may do so. And for those of you who are in the wider balcony, welcome, welcome, welcome. Gather close because I want to talk to you a little bit about a story and about some things that are going on in, in our life together. In a little while, the adults who are going to stay in this room and who are participating in things will be hearing about a story from the book of Acts. And in the story of book of Acts, it's a really kind of complex and convoluted argument about what food is good to eat and what food is not good to eat and who you should eat with and when you should eat with them and a whole bunch of other rules which we're not going to get into today. But I was just thinking about, well, you might later, but I was just thinking about what kinds of foods I like to eat. And, you know, there are some things we grow in the garden that I like to eat a lot. Are there things you like to eat? Like strawberries? What do you like to eat, Isa? Strawberries? Raspberries? Blueberries? All of those are great things. Do you like Brussels sprouts? Yeah. Well, there are quite a few people here to hear. I'm not. Uh. <laughs> are you going to grow lots of spinach in your garden? No. Well, you know, there's some foods that we really like to eat. And some other foods that we don't like to eat quite so much. E even though those, some of those foods might be good for us. But what happens in the story from the book of Acts is that Peter has this wonderful, wonderful vision in which he realizes that all of the foods come from the earth. And the earth was made by God, and that makes it good. And that all of the foods are good. And that what God calls good, no one should call not good. And so that's an important kind of thing that we can learn together. Today, we have an opportunity to learn a little bit about our earth and all of the richness it, it produces. 
after our time together today, after the, at the end of the worship service, that we'll be gathering down in room 32, which is down in the basement, and children and adults, everyone is welcome if you'd like to participate. And we're going to start planting the children's garden. We've got seeds, and we've got soil, and we have those eight beautiful raised boxes out in the yard, which are going to become our children's garden. I heard that we are going to have a pizza garden. I don't think we can plant pizza crusts, but we can grow tomatoes and peppers and oregano and basil. There's a lot of pizza stuff we could grow in one of those. And so we're going to be growing all kinds of wonderful things that can become food for people. And it reminds us of how much all of the richness that comes to us and all of the good food we have is a gift of God. Let's say a prayer together. Gracious God, we are so grateful for your gifts of food. There are many foods that we like. When we think of strawberries and blueberries and raspberries, smiles come to our face and we think of your goodness. Help us to think of your goodness whenever we find rich things from your wonderful gift of soil and water. May we be good at tending the gardens that you have given us. Amen. Susan, Susan has some activities for those of you who would like to do activities in the back for a little while during worship. And don't forget, we'll be joining after worship to plant the children's garden. Our reading from the scripture comes from Acts chapter 11, verses 1 through 18, and it's from the New Revised Standard Version. Now the apostles and the brothers and sisters who were in Judea heard that the Gentiles had also accepted the word of God. So when Peter went up to Jerusalem, the circumcised believers criticized him, saying, Why did you go to uncircumcised men and eat with them? Then Peter began to explain it to them, step by step. He said, I was in the city of Joppa, praying, and in a trance I saw a vision. There was something like a large sheet coming down from heaven, being lowered, at its four corners, and it came close to me. So I looked at it, and I saw four-footed animals and beasts of prey, but also reptiles and birds of the air. I also heard a voice saying to me, get up, Peter, kill and eat. But I replied, by no means, Lord, for nothing profane or unclean has ever entered my mouth. But a second time, the voice answered from heaven, what God has made clean, you must not call profane. This happened three times. Then everything was pulled up again to heaven. At that very moment, three men sent to me from Caesarea arrived at the house where we were. The Spirit told me to go with them and not to make a distinction between them and us. These six brothers also accompanied me, and we entered the man's house. He told us how he had seen the angel standing in his house and saying, Send to Joppa and bring Simon, who is called Peter. He will give you a message by which you and your entire household will be saved. And as I began to speak, the Holy Spirit fell upon them all, just as it had upon us at the beginning." And I remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said, quote, John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. If then God gave them the same gift that he gave 
when we believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, who was I that I could hinder God? When they heard this, they were silenced, and they praised God, saying, Then God has given even to the Gentiles the repentance that leads to life. For the word of God in scripture, for the word of God among us, for the word of God within us, thanks be to God. It is an incredible honor to finally be here, to be with you all, to be here, here, (laughs) and not here, there. (laughs) Greetings to you all here in the sanctuary, in the balcony, in the bigger balcony, and for those of you who will be engaging the service not on today, welcome. I have been welcomed quite graciously, and I look forward to our next few months together. Thank you all for such a gracious welcome. If you would, please let us pray. Holy God, here we are on this sacred day that you have created. I ask that you might put these butterflies in my stomach and allow them to fly in formation so that the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable to you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So travel back with me to third grade, Kalamazoo, Michigan. I was at a brand new school in a brand new city in a brand new state. Mrs. Sokola, my new teacher, introduced me to another student who was supposed to be, um, who was designated as my helper for the day. And I'm pretty sure that this girl did not like me very much. (laughs) And that was confirmed at recess when she ditched me at the door. So I looked out of the playground and I saw a section where most of the third graders were playing with jump ropes and so I ventured over there and with every step I mustered up the strength that was needed to ask these kids to join in. It was a familiar walk for me because I've had to do this often in my life, but it still wasn't easy. And so when I got up to the first game, I heard the most dreaded phrase that I've ever encountered in my entire childhood. Tick, tock, game locked. That's what I heard, right, when people didn't want to play with me. And that was the law of the playground. And once it was spoken, a person couldn't argue with it. It just meant that they had to go off and find some other place to play. Eventually, I did all right, I think, at least. Um, Some of the kids, you know, went against the laws of the playground, and they would include me in whatever it was that third graders did back then. And I found some people who were willing to eat lunch with me, and, and even some people who would share their seat on the school bus. And though it wasn't always easy for them or for me, it was through those few who received me and welcomed me that I was able to thrive and be the best third grader I knew how to be. And this reading from Acts that Mark so graciously read for us speaks to this very same thing in some ways. Word had gotten around that Peter was associating with the Gentiles. Perhaps he was even eating with them. Now this, according to the Jewish laws back then, was strictly prohibited and was very distinctly seen as unclean. And so when they'd heard that this group of Gentile outsiders were accepting the word of God, these insider believers came up to Peter and questioned his behavior. They were so caught up in following the law that it hindered their ability to perceive how the spirit might actually have space enough to move in ways and in places that they didn't expect. Tick tock, spirit locked. Now, being the game player and rule follower that I am, I'm not openly endorsing the breaking of laws. 
right? Following the law is not a problem in and of itself. The challenge for us is to see when and how these long-standing laws stay relevant to changing situations. Now, my concern is to be aware of the laws that do exist and then to challenge the ones that go against the message of love that is so present throughout the Bible. A still speaking God, as we like to say in the UCC, allows us this opportunity to listen and to stay tuned to what we are called to do and how we are called to do it. This matter of exclusion and keeping the other out didn't only concern those in the ancient world. It has more to it, right, than my own childhood experiences being the new kid at so many different schools. In 2022, this scripture is still very relevant in our context as well. In the week that I've been here in Bellingham, it's been refreshing to experience a city with such an active posture toward protecting and healing the environment. And while I appreciate and applaud the efforts, it is so very troubling that we even need to have such dedicated commitments on every level. Humankind was entrusted with the care of the earth and we've done all sorts of atrocious things with it that don't always constitute care. On a large, medium and small scale, we can all witness, we witness over this place of destruction that we have done to this amazing resource that God has gifted us. Tick tock, creation locked. The reality of immigration in this country is not as clear cut and problematic as our lawmakers would have us believe. There's so many people whose lives get interrupted and their families torn apart because of these ill-written and coded laws to keep specific and targeted folk out. Now people have had to get creative, right, about finding ways in distant places to keep their love and their lives together. And even for those who have managed to find a pathway to legal immigration, there's still a pile of paperwork stacks of cash, and many more hoops to jump through just to get an interview. Tick tock, borders locked. It is an outrage that people in 2022 are still being prevented from fully participating in family life because of their queerness. We, of course, have made major strides to be more inclusive of all people, no matter what their sexuality may be. And we must remain vigilant. In a country with politics that care more for the survival of the system than the very people who elected them to represent the population. Red, blue, or some other color, the consequences of self-serving politics continue to endanger LGBTQ plus folk of every age dialing back basic level human rights in one form or another. Tick tock, sexuality locked. Historically and currently, people of color haven't and do not have the same access to resources that have become a birthright of sorts for many of our white siblings. Race relations, of course, have come a long way here in the USA, yes, however, while we still have manifesto following white folk openly shooting grocery stores in black neighborhoods or corporations breaking treaties and doing violence to indigenous people and their lands or people of Asian descent being attacked during a global pandemic that they didn't even cause, there is much yet to do to truly honor all people of every color. Tick tock, race locked. And we've long known that educating folk is one of the most potent things we can do to empower a people. And that is why it is so very painfully obvious how targeted our educational systems are. Knowledge is power, and so we disempower folk by not giving them access to appropriate education. And then we stay in the shadows about issues that directly affect our very communities and we systematically dismantle education and specific zip codes and then watch them crumble 
and then blame those very same people for the consequences of our manufactured systems, tick tock, education locked. And I can go on all day long about these different ways that we get tangled up in participating in keeping the other out. But I know we want to listen to the music and plant seeds. And so we could pick any human category. And I bet we could very quickly come up with several ways in which oppression exists there too. We deal with oppression and exclusion around matters of gender. Our children, youth, and elderly populations are targets for age discrimination. For centuries, physical and mental disabilities have been widely misunderstood, to put it in the kindest way possible from this pulpit. We live in a time and a place where Christianity is no longer a religion of the few and, I dare say, has become elitist and exclusionary. And then we have the audacity to hide our bigotry behind the cries for religious freedom even as we actively persecute others who dare to have beliefs that differ from ours. I get it. It is human nature to want to belong and to want to protect and to look out for us and ours. This isn't anything new. As we read in Acts today, even the people in the early church struggled with this very thing. History shows it happening repeatedly, and we're still doing it now across the world. Sometimes, though, we are so intent on protecting what we have that we end up keeping others out, often in deadly ways. Now, I know we can quickly rattle off all the different systems in society that keep us back, and we're much more at ease calling out everyone else who actively participates in keeping us out, but then we seem to not even notice the ways that we oppress the other and even those who are like us in our very own communities. Recalling my experiences on the playground, it was my relatively new peers who had kept me locked out of their games. Not the older four to fifth graders or the younger K1 through, th through two, not kids from another rival school, it was other third graders in my school, in my class, who kept me from playing with them. And now that I'm like no longer bitter about the situation, <laughs> I can kind of see, you know, as an adult, why such a thing could have gone on, right? We had a limited amount of time for recess, and there could only be two rope twirlers at one time, and maybe two people at most jumping at the same time. And these kids felt like they had to protect their precious resource of playtime on the playground and be selective about who could play so that they could have the best possible jump rope experience with the limited resources they had. Unfortunately, though, this frame of mind did not remain on the playground. We've all grown up with it in some manner as we continue to compete for one thing or another with the limited resources that we have access to ourselves. And this stockpiling mentality is a sickness of our society. And though it plays out differently in different settings and circumstances, none of us are exempt from this. We work hard at getting and keeping what we've got at any cost. And we get so caught up surviving, sometimes we end up perpetuating the very systems we're trying to fight. Sometimes we don't even recognize that we're doing it. And there are times that we get so focused on doing things right that we forget to do the right thing. I'm gonna say that again. We get so focused on doing things right that we forget to do the right thing. We get so afraid of losing all that we spent years achieving that we begin to preserve the very structures that we despise and fight against. We create separations based on our sexual orientations, pigmentations, national originations, gender identifications, political inclinations, educations, or other iterations of human variations. Tick tock, what have you got locked? If we're to take the scripture seriously, and we do, then we must pay attention 
to how it is that God treats the barriers that our fears create. Peter's vision challenges us to rethink our ways of protecting the insiders, but instead to be open to the supposed outsiders. Throughout the Bible and in the life of Christ, we're given glimpses of a God who gathers the outcasts, those who are found outside of our comfort zones and in places we least expect. I want us to really slow down and notice how yet another narrative in our sacred book illuminates God's disdain for human-made divisions and the accompanying discriminations that fortify the spaces between us and the ever-changing them. It is a matter of life and death that we begin to come together in countercultural ways not just for ourselves or for those in our own circles, but for the good of the entire world up to and including the non-human aspects of it. Now, I'm not here to offer solutions. I don't have the secret formula. I am, though, just making observations. And hopefully, as we share observations with one another, we can together discover creative ways to love, to live, and to learn with each other and the other. Today, I'm challenging us to rethink our ways of protecting the insiders and to be more open to the outsiders, whoever that may be. Let us have the audacity to thoroughly examine what we carry that prevents us from acknowledging our mistakes, no matter how well-intentioned we meant to be. Let us boldly question what we carry that perpetuates the very injustices we fight individually and collectively. Let us disentangle ourselves from what we carry that allows us to ignore and or minimize the blatant and urgent cry of God's people all around us. Let us unload all of what we carry that distorts God's vision for a healing and a whole world so that one day we can all declare together, tick tock, nothing is locked. Amen. To stand as you're able and uh, let us sing the next hymn, number 451, or that is printed in the bulletin. Okay, maybe it's not printed. Just kidding. As most of you know, the offering invitation is a time when liturgists are asked to tell a personal story about why they give their time, energy, and monetary support to First Congregational Church. And I had this idea two and a half years ago before COVID. 
and I've been waiting to do this when they asked me to be a liturgist. So I hope you'll work with me. I'll be asking you to literally stand for social justice. Not yet. Worship is not a spectator sport. In just a second, I'm going to give you the names of numerous community justice, social justice agencies or groups. If you here work for that agency or group or you have volunteered at one time or another uh, at that agency or group, as I name it, I would appreciate that you stand up and stay standing if you're able. If you can't, just raise your hand and prop it up and leave it there. I hope you're with me. I've been waiting a long time to do this. <laughs> a word to those worshiping in the bigger balcony, you too can participate. You're not off the hook on this one. Type in your agency or group you work for or you volunteer for uh, in the comments section and others worshiping online will share that with you. Are you ready? Yes. Okay. I've got a couple of plants on the first one. <laughs> Opportunity Council, Community Energy Challenge. Thank you, Mark Schofield, plant one. But pretty soon, the rest of you here, hopefully, or most of you. Be uh, Bellingham Racial Equity Commission. Thank you, Mona. Interfaith Coalition. Family Promise. I'm going to go a little quicker here because I got a list. Northwest Youth Services or Ground Floor. Fresh Start. Dental Van Project. Vaccination for Pets. ASPCA, I'm going to speed it up here, <laughs> Mount Baker Planned Parenthood, DSHS, MNCJ, Mola Faith Network for Climate Justice, NAMI, which is National Alliance for Mental Illness, Child Care and Early Learning Centers, Habitat for Humanity, Ark of Whatcom County, Hospice House or Hospice Board, Whatcom Peace and Justice Center, and I see some of you raising your hand because you're in multiple, you're way ahead of me, thank you. Domestic Violence and Sexual Assault Services, Bellingham Central Alliance Medical Equipment Loan, Bellingham Food Bank, Meals on Wheels, Resources and Restore Recycling, Birchwood Food Desert Fighters, YW or YMCA, Whatcom County Hearing, Speech, and Deafness Center, Colshon or Whatcom Community Land Trust, Big Brothers, Big Sisters, American Red Cross, Whatcom Community Foundation, Lummi and Nooksack Tribal Agencies or Health Services, Salvation Army, Lighthouse, Mission Ministries, Goodwill Services, we're on a roll, American Cancer Society, ALS Association, Victim Support Services, Alzheimer's Society, Whatcom County Search and Rescue, Bellingham Housing Authority, Special Olympics, Lydia's Place, WorkSource Whatcom, Northwest Immigrant Rights Project, Boys and Girls Club, Senior Center, Whatcom Dispute and Resolution Center, and if I haven't included these already in different places, social workers or those who are public school teachers, administrators, and parapros, and those who are doctors, nurses, and LPNs, and we're going to deal with Carol Nicolay today. Thank you, Carol. <laughs> okay, I didn't think this was gonna be an exhaustive list, although it was long. Who and what did I miss? Call it out and stand up.
Now stay standing just a second. I'm going to go biblical on you. Oop, I forgot my Bible. Thank you. I'm going biblical on you, and I want you to stay standing just one more second. Matthew 25, 35, and 36. For I was hungry, and you fed me. I was thirsty, and you gave me a drink. I was homeless, and you gave me a room. I was shivering, and you gave me clothes. I was sick, and you stopped for a visit. I was in prison, and you didn't ignore me. You, uh, you can go ahead and, and have a seat. Thank you. You all are what Jesus was talking about when he proclaimed the kingdom of God, and so all of you who support your fellow congregationalists but didn't stand where one of these organizations, which you do by giving to FCCB. You may be, I already said you could be seated, so I, I got ahead of my script. <laughs> FCCB is not just about social justice work. We do through this church. Many of you do work outside in the community, which is probably more important. But social justice work you do in the community needs support from the congregation and the church because it's discouraging and tiring work at times and it saps your hope and energy. Can I hear an amen about that? <laughs> you know what I mean. FCCB is here to bring you hope and equip you for the journey and feed our souls. My point, you are who FCCB, FCCB is outside this beautiful sanctuary in the world, and you are why I'm part of this congregation and faith community. Now, I was hoping Bert would be here because I'd get an amen from Bert. Thank you. Why do I give to FCCB? Because of all of you. Standing for justice in your ch choice of work or as volunteers in the community or supporting those people with your gifts. Will the ushers please come forward? Your heart wide open Though the waves want to push you around mm, you got to keep your heart wide open Till your faith brings you back to solid ground Mm, I'm gonna keep. I'm gonna keep my heart. I'm gonna keep wide open. I'm gonna keep my heart wide open. Though these waves wanna push, though they want me around, though the waves wanna push me around, I'm gonna keep. I'm gonna keep my heart. I'm gonna keep wide open. I'm gonna keep my heart wide open. Till my faith brings me back, brings me back to solid ground. Till my faith brings me back to solid yes, ground. We gotta keep, we gotta keep our hearts, our hearts. we gotta our keep hearts. wide open. We gotta our keep our hearts, hearts wide open. Though these waves wanna pull us around, though these waves wanna pull us around, we gotta keep, we gotta keep our hearts, we gotta keep. Why don't you open till our faith brings us back, brings us back to solid ground, till our faith brings us back to solid ground. Say hi. Hi. Um, well, Carol, I'm going to invite you up here in just a second, um, but maybe as you make your way up, come on up. Um, I want to invite the rest of you to, um, to close your eyes. I'm going to invite you to imagine something. Um, I want to invite you to imagine a time, maybe recently, maybe long ago, when you had some medical challenge that you didn't really understand. 
Uh, maybe it was a symptom you didn't know about and you needed to call somebody. Um, maybe you're like me, you got some nurses in the family that you can call whatever time it is if <laughs> your kid does something weird or whatever. Um, maybe it was the kind of medical challenge that just goes on for days or months or years. And maybe you called somebody for advice, but also there were those people who came alongside you, who journeyed with you, who were your companions, so that even when you were overwhelmed, even when you were confused, even when you were grieving, you weren't alone. I invite you to just think of some of those people, name some of those names in your heart, and when you're ready, uh, open your eyes. For so many people, friends and members of First Congregational Church of Bellingham, for the last decade or so, that person who has, I'm sure, taken calls at all hours with all manner of questions, who has accompanied people to uh, confusing doctor's visits and especially done that long term companioning of care so that folks would not be alone in the labyrinth of healing or dying or just whatever medical process you were in. Um, for so many folks, that person has been Carol. Um, Carol is now uh, moving on and also literally moving. And so we thought it would be appropriate to say a little prayer for her to officially um, release her from her uh, uh, covenant with us as our health minister, um, but also just to share in the gratitude for the sweet work that she has done among us, for the really difficult work she has done among us. And um, the word that comes to mind is sacred, for the sacred work she's done among us. Um, so, uh, Carol, you're going to have a little part where you say a thing in a second, so I'm going to bring this microphone over to you. Um, but the first part is for us, so if you have your bulletin handy, whether you're here or at home, please join me. In November of 2013, I'm sure it feels like only yesterday, Carol. In, in no <laughs> it adds up. Uh, in November of 2013, First Congregational called Carol Nicolay to be our health minister. She has served faithfully in this role for nearly a decade, caring for our sick, companioning our wounded, and honoring our dying. Now Carol and Neil are called to another place, and Carol is called out of her role as health minister. We gather now to celebrate her vital ministry among us and to release her from her call here. Do you the members and friends of First Congregational Church of Bellingham release Carol from her duties of health minister. We do, with the help of God. Do you offer your encouragement for her ministry as it unfolds in new ways and in new places? We do. And do you, Carol, release this local church from turning to you and depending on you? I do, with the help of God. I'm going to stand closer to you because this is just like <laughs> such a tender and sweet thing. Um, do you offer encouragement and prayers for the continuing ministries of care here at First Congregational Church of Bellingham? I do, with the help of God. Can I give you a hug? Okay. <laughs> Well, first of all, it's been an honor to serve as your health minister. I did not do this work alone. I want to recognize that we had, have had and continue to have faith community nurses who have worked with us, Brenda Nicholson, Maridel Johnson, Jean Brotherton, and currently Alana Steele. 
are continue, have continued this work. I've worked with five different pastors, including Deanna Murray, who's sitting back there, <laughs> and so grateful for this opportunity to serve you. I carry you in my heart as we move to Lacey, Washington. Neil and I, after four years of waiting, have finally been um, admitted to Panorama Retirement Community. So we're very happy to be moving and very sad to be leaving. Amen, Carol. Thank you so much. <laughs> And we know that you will keep in touch, and I hope you both will know that your ministry here will forever shape who we are as a congregation, and we'll get to keep living in the blessing of that gift. Uh, here now, ascending prayer. God, you who unlock every game, you who are wiser, more persistent, and more faithful than all the forces of oppression that gather around us. Send us now, so that we may be witnesses to what you are unlocking in our world, in our community, in our own hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs>